Good morning. I am pleased to be with you this morning, and I appreciate the invitation that has been extended to me to talk with you today on laser Doppler vibrometry for health and strength monitoring of civil structures. Clarice Kettis and other individuals who were preparing these meetings, she suggested that, I'll, that I also expand on other um, subjects that may merit some interest from your part to for the railroad industry. So I'm adding a couple more of, of those slides in this presentation, just to give a more complete overview of what we can do for the industry. So going ahead, let me show you the, the, this video. The signal quality of a laser vibrometry measurement depends on specific properties of the returned light. The intensity of the returned light is the primary measure and is visualized on a signal level indicator. The surface determines the spatial distribution of the backscattered light and thus the information that the photodetector can receive from its position in space. The signal to noise ratio thus depends on the surface properties. Our patented technology, QTEC, now enables a significant improvement to the signal to noise ratio. Even the finest details are resolved in the measurement signal, and unambiguous data are the key to straightforward post-processing. QTEC improves the results in almost any measurement and is particularly beneficial for services that move laterally or rotate. QTEC is faster because the average count can be drastically reduced to achieve the same signal-to-noise ratio, and easier too because it is independent of the surface properties. With QTEC, we have reinvented laser vibrometry by eliminating the root cause of noise with rough surfaces, the speckle effect. On an optically smooth surface, the reflected laser light is returned without loss to the photo detector. Vibration tests in the real world are often carried out on engineered surfaces that are optically rough. Now the light is no more reflected, but scattered. It contains dark and bright speckles. The laser point now looks grainy and pattern changes with the perspective of the observer. Also, the photo detector of a laser sensor represents an observer and while measuring vibration, the pattern and the amount of received light changes constantly. It can even drop down to zero for a very short time. Occasionally, no light returns at the photo detector. This effect can cause broadband noise and unwanted dropouts with optical measurements. Now, wouldn't it be a good idea selecting the observer perspective such that there is always a bright speckle containing all the information on the vibration in focus? QTEC's heterodyne multipath interferometer provides exactly the capability to avoid reduced signal at the photo detector by using multiple detectors. Every detector represents an observer with a unique perspective, and thus a unique speckle pattern. For every point in time, the signal level varies with the speckle pattern. As the pattern is random, it can be shown that the combination of the signals from the spatially distributed detectors results in a statistically stable signal level. Ultra-fast electronics in the sensor head weight the detected signals in real time and only the best part of the signal is transferred to a common output. QTEC's capability to measure independent of the surface properties makes it a safe choice for all applications, providing fast, easy, robust results. It is faster because the average count can drastically be reduced to achieve the same signal-to-noise ratio and easier because it is independent of the surface properties while the stable signal level facilitates decisions on the best measurement location. So we sum the principle of operation of our laser Doppler technology. And this slide over here shows the, a basic interferometric diagram and we basically measure the velocity and displacement of a vibrating surface. For more details, um, I would, you may like to reach me and I could give you more information about it, but for the purpose of the presentation, this is enough. Um, so what are the advantages of the technology? First of all, it's non-contact, it's remote. You don't need um, inst instrumentation with attachable sensors and is fast compared to traditional methods. It's fully calibratable every two years and traceable to NIST standards. It's established technology that has been used in Europe, Japan, and China for many years and it greatly reduces the, the number of cumbersome contact sensors for mounting and wiring and monitoring each individual sen sensor each, each time, as well as the calibration for each one every time that you make a new measurement. Um, it also reduces the liability, the liability insurance for the personnel involved in attaching those sensors in, in precarious locations. Now, the question is now, where is this technology used? We use it in 
our space and defense industry for many, many years, probably 30, 40 years, 30 years, and more than 30 years. And um, is used for, in this example, for turbine blades and blisks and other devices. We use it in acoustics and ultrasonics. In this case, this is a sonar thread for ultrasonic welding. We use it also for sensors and actuators and the sensors used in imaging for medical imaging. We also use it in automotive. Any car manufacturer will have many, many, many uh, laser vibrometers to measure, let's say, a body in white, to measure valves, to measure tires, to measure many, many characteristics. So the car that you're riding right now, uh, from sensors, men's devices to all the car has used, they have used many of the sensors to characterize the dynamic of the car for safety and for performance. Also in biological, we measure hearing, we do hearing measurements, we do medical devices for hearing implantable devices. There are standards that all those need to pass a pass fail testing prior to implantation. For example, we do microelectronics like MEMS devices and so on. And in the structural dynamics, we have done in much work in bridges, uh, especially in the cables for tension and so on. In this case, you see the Chow Bridge in Canada, in which the, mesh, the cables have been um, checked for tension. The measurements are done, for example, to give you an idea, they are me measured remotely at about one third of the distance and the part is being excited either by a hammer or by a technical person uh, moving to ca the cable by itself. And we acquire those measurements and that information is stored and compared with the actual measurement that they should have. That way you can, it's possible to see if the maintenance on those bridges and cables is um, correct. Um, Professor Mala has done work in Bridges too, and you can find his work in the TIDC website. When it comes to why you should consider applying these measurements to railroad, um, let me give you a couple of examples. One is for the safety of rails. In Denmark, they use automatic uh, laser ultrasonic systems that is mounted on a rail car and is slid along the rail and they can see if there have been cracks or any type of these um, problems and it can be easily detected and is done while the car is moving. Uh, this measurement is has been done with the courtesy of Polytech China and they share measurement on a rail car and on a car axle. And this is to validate final element modelings and to see if they're supposed to be working as expected and to do modification in the model and see if anything can be improved. And why is this important? This is important because these measurements can help to check if the components during maintenance are good or not. Sometimes visual inspection is not enough. So this type of ultrasonic testing or structural testing help determine if the part needs to be changed or improved. Also will help in glazing, retention and retrofitting. Now, when, where and why we would like to implement these methods, uh, we would like to do it because it reduces dangerous personal involvement. Uh, we're in structures with difficult access. It lowers the cost of test for testing time and your the insurances cost are lowered. Our technology uh, will not display traditional methods, but rather add to those with two year calibrations intervals. Uh, routine calibration prior to each test is not, not, not necessarily needed and cabling considerably reduced. We also provide complementary data for st structure uh, structures, the civil engineering structures, to see how they have decreased in the time in time, and then you, it's possible to strengthen those structures again and then see how they again in time are reduced. So you know, constant testing for that. Um, these instruments are measuring real time and they are, they are portable. And um, especially in the Northeast and Canada, where the weather is extreme, um, is 
it merits to consider these new technologies. Canada is already working on this infra infrastructure per testing and uh, China and Japan has done it for a number of years. The question is, do we want to catch up with them? And this is what I have for you today. Thank you very much.